if you don't use something every day, you're going to forget how it works. And that's how it is with fractions. For students who are in classes like algebra, geometry, trigonometry, pre-calculus, there are so many things that are going to be built off of these fraction skills and your teachers are going to assume that you know it and you probably have forgotten. So let's go through a quick review. Hi, I'm Tammy and I do math for coffee and we are starting with this fraction review for upper level students right now. Let's talk about multiplication of fractions first because that's actually the easiest one. In this first part, I'm going to show you how it's done with just numbers and I'm going to show you how to do it with variables. So let's look at three fourths times one fifth. You just multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators and it's exactly how you wish all fraction operations work, but it doesn't work like that. So three times one and four times five so the answer is 3 over 20. Now let's add a couple of friendly little x's. You have 3x over 4 times x over 5, which is the same fractions with just some variables. So you still multiply the numerators, 3x times x, which will become 3x squared. 4 times 5 is 20. In your class, if any of this can be reduced, if the 3 and the 20 have a common factor that you can pull out and cancel, you need to do that too, but these don't. The written funny part here is because sometimes you see multiplication written with parentheses and I just wanted to point that out so you'll recognize it when you see it. You're asked to multiply with a whole number. You have to put that whole number over 1 so that it appears as a fraction. Any number over 1 equals itself. So now we multiply 7 times 3x, that's 21x, and 1 times 4 is 4. Let's talk about division. This is one that people forget. When you are working with fractions and you are dividing, we do something called skip, flip, multiply, or we multiply times the reciprocal of the second fraction. Basically, we don't actually divide fractions. We just rewrite the problem and turn it into a multiplication and flip the second fraction over. So 3 fourths divided by 1 fifth is going to be 3 fourths times 5 over 1. Just turn the second fraction upside down, not the first one. Then you just multiply like normal. 3 times 5 over 4 times 1, the answer is 15 over 4. With variables, it seems more complicated, but you do the exact same thing. So 3x over 4 stays the same. Instead of dividing by x over 5, we're going to multiply by 5 over x. 3x times 5 is 15x. 4 times x is 4x. And in this situation, the x on the top and the bottom will cancel. So the answer is 15 over 4. Division can be written very funny. 3 fourths over one fifth. In later courses like Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus, this is going to be called a complex fraction. Just remember that that operator is division. It's three fourths divided by one fifth. So then you do the same thing. Flip the second fraction and multiply. We get 15 fourths again. It's just written in a way that's very intimidating. If you have to divide with a whole number, again, we write that whole number as a fraction with a denominator equal to one. And with division, you flip the second one. So 3x over 4 divided by 7 becomes 3x over 4 times 1 over 7. Multiply straight across, we get 3x over 28. With adding and subtracting, you need a common denominator. With multiplying and dividing, you do not need a common denominator. I'm using the plus minus sign here just because it's going to be the same whether it's 3 fourths plus 1 fifth or 3 fourths minus 1 fifth with regards to how you start. In order to create a common denominator, there's more than one way to do it, but what I'm doing here is just simply multiplying each fraction times the other guy's denominator. 3 fourths needs to be multiplied times the 5. It's got to be 5 over 5 because that 5 over 5 is actually a 1, and 1 fifth has to be multiplied times 4 over 4, and I got that 4 from the denominator in the first fraction. 5 times 3 is 15, 4 times 1 is 4, and the denominator for both are now 20. So 15 20ths plus 4 20ths is 19 20ths, and if this was a subtraction problem, it would be 15 minus 4, 11 over 20. When you do this with variables, you do the exact same thing. I have to find a common denominator, and with these particular fractions, with the denominators of 4 and 5, I'm just going to multiply each fraction times the other denominator over itself. So this time we're going to end up with 15x over 20 plus 4x over 20, and we get 19x over 20. Here's where it can get a little complicated. These are the kinds of problems that are going to pop up in your algebra courses. What you're looking at in this first one just is the same thing we just did with numbers. It's just that the denominator isn't a number. It's an expression x minus 2. These two fractions have the same denominator of x minus 2. So you can use that denominator and then just add the numerators. And we get 8 over x minus 2. 
this guy. This one's tricky. One of the denominators is x minus 2, and the other denominator is y minus 2. And yeah, I did this on purpose because this one's going to be a little bit of heavy lifting. This is not an introductory problem, but the concept of how you start is exactly the same as when you're working with just numbers. You're trying to make a common denominator. The fastest way to do that without having to think about it too much is to just multiply each denominator by the other guy. So the x minus 2 needs to be multiplied times y minus 2, but you'd have to multiply y minus 2 over y minus 2 so that you're not changing the value. The thing in red is is actually equal to 1. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Multiply that fraction times x minus 2 over x minus 2. That way, both fractions will end up with a denominator of x minus 2 times y minus 2. Now for the numerators, you've got some algebra you have to do here. We're going to do distributive property 3 times y minus 2 plus 5 times x minus 2. Multiply everything through. The only thing we can really simplify here are the constants because you can't add the y's and the x's. So we end up with 3y plus 5x minus 16. I'm tossing in some mixed numbers here because you might have forgotten how to change mixed numbers into improper fractions. An improper fraction is where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. That's all it means. But if you have 2 and 3 fourths and you need to multiply that times 1 fifth, you need to make 2 and 3 fourths into an actual fraction and not a mixed number like this. And the way we do that is you multiply the 2 times the 4 and then add the 3. In middle school, sometimes they call this the check mark method just to help you remember how to do it. So we start with 2 times 4 plus 3 in the numerator over 4 times 1 fifth. That works out to be 11 over 4 times 1 fifth, and that's going to be an answer of 11 over 20. Now, when you add some variables, this all of a sudden feels more complicated, but it's the exact same procedure. The 3x over 4 is fine as it is. That's already a fraction. But the 1 with x over 5, that's a mixed number. So 1 times 5 plus x will be the numerator. That goes over the denominator 5. Now, remember, we're multiplying. We don't need a common denominator here. When things start to get complicated, the procedures all get mixed up sometimes. We're multiplying. We just need to get that mixed number out of the way. So now we have 3x over 4 times. 5 plus x over 5. When you multiply the numerators, you got to use distributive property. We have 3x times the quantity 5 plus x all over 4 times 5, which is 20. Multiplying that 3x through, we get 15x plus 3x squared over 20. If you are in a class that's going over something called rational functions, that's going to be where you're going to need these fraction operations. On my channel, I do have playlists for all the different courses that you might be taking. So go ahead and click into the one right now that applies to you.